That's it, curiosity. You know, it's been a big few days for them. Lots of questions, lots of talk, you know, every interview they do. Um, lots of people wishing them well all over the world. Are they able to get back and concentrate now, focus? Because they'll need to. They're playing Belgium, who were frightening tonight. Really, really good. Um, so it'll be a tough task at the best of times for Denmark. Um, they'll, can they switch back on, focus, and, and you know, show what they can do? Because I mean, coming into the tournament, they were quite a good record, some decent players. Um, You'd, be, you'd feel for them, you'd, you'd, you'd want them to perform, you're hoping that they can be galvanised, that all this brings them even closer together, better as a group, that they'll be able to put on a performance against Denmark. Yeah, the, the line that's usually trotted out, uh, Damien, is, oh, look, they're professional footballers, they'll be able to put those things to the back of their mind. But uh, there have been so many distractions since the events and since Christian Her Eriksen's cardiac arrest that I suppose they'll be very distracted going into this game, won't they? Um, well, hopefully... They'll be more in tune than they were possibly in the second half the other day. Uh, yeah. They've obviously had three, four days. Um, I believe they've been on to Christian Eriksen numerous times on FaceTime and what have you. Um, if, if there is one bonus or positive to come out of it, there was a real uh, pre-Christian Eriksen cardiac arrest. There was a real disconnect between the Denmark players and, and the fans and the public. So I think it's just brought the whole country together. Um, so I think in a way it might have galvanised them if possible. They'll be emotionally, physically recharged. I don't know how they went out and played the second half the other day. Yeah. Um, because, listen, I think the football world froze, Denmark froze, and anyone working here in, in, the or, in RTE that day froze. Um, it was horrific scenes. So um, I hope they put in a performance tonight, but let's not forget, just like Kevin said, Belgium are a top team, but... Um, I hope, uh, and I'm sure they will, Denmark, because, like I touched on the other day, they're a really good team. I studied them for a couple of years. Um, obviously missing Christian Eriksen now, but um, it'll be a good game to watch. Yeah, but the challenge, as you say, is absolutely massive facing Belgium. And Kevin, we were having a chat beforehand, and just the decision to play it, it, it now seems quite unusual, but I suppose under the circumstances on Saturday, uh, it was hard to make a rational decision for anybody, yeah. including the players. But the fact that they agreed to play against Finland, to play that last five minutes and then the second half, it was a bit unusual, wasn't it? Yeah, listen, I'm, I suppose the, the euphoria they might have felt in the dressing room, finding out that he was all right, that he was awake, texting, giving thumbs up. They would have known all that, they would have got that information. Trying to put myself in their shoes, um, I'd imagine the UEFA official would have come in and their manager and the referee and how do you feel? Do you want to play? These are your options. Play today, play tomorrow. We don't know exactly what options they got, um, but they decided to play. You know, they, they knew he was going to be okay then. So, um, listen, in an ideal world, You'd have, you'd have played the next day. But I can totally understand when you're a professional, you're a sports person, your brain works differently. You're not thinking, you know, you're focused so much on football and, and is he okay? Okay, we go on to the match now and we yeah. play. Um, you're, you've dealt with a lot in your career, I suppose, as a sports person, professional, to get to that point. Um, you, you're used to so many things and focusing on, you forget about funerals, weddings, all that sort of stuff goes out the window and you're so focused, I can understand why they went, yeah, let's play the game now, we know he's okay. So um, probably better in hindsight, they've spoke about themselves, they would have preferred, you know, looking back, it's easy to look back and yeah, say, sure. wait till the next morning. But they did it, they made the decision. Um, and listen, that's, that's something that they agreed at the time. You can only do how, how you feel at the time. I have to say, Peter, that I don't think they were given a great choice. Um, yeah, they you know, finish the game tonight mm. or 12 o'clock the next day. And that's obviously down to UEFA not wanting games to clash, etc. But it's funny that when they did play later that night, it clashed for half an hour with the Turkey game. So I thought it was really poor from UEFA. Uh, play the game the next night, you know, shouldn't have finished that day. Secondly, 12 o'clock, anybody that's played a 12 o'clock kickoff, Kev, you're getting up at half seven, eight in the morning, you're having pre-match, the lads won't have slept. I thought it was disgraceful. Uh, and it's only come out now, you know, yeah. I said the other day, UEFA, OK, they've looked after them. But it sounds like they haven't. Uh, and it sounds like a lot of them didn't want to play. And we'll see the footage later on this evening. But Simon Carr, who's got a lot of plaudits, captain, fantastic. Yeah. He had to leave the pitch after 60 minutes. So I think that speaks volumes. Yeah.